Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about scraffito, um, the scraffito technique, and the difference between leather hard clay and bone dry clay. So right now I have two pieces of clay in front of me. This one is leather hard. You can see it has a darker color. It feels cold because there's still moisture in it. This is bone dry clay and it doesn't have that dark color. It doesn't feel cold. Um, and it has this like dusty quality to it. So this is completely dry. This clay is the most fragile clay. It's the most fragile stage. Um, and if you take your bone dry clay, it will, it will break. It breaks super easily. So this is just some bone dry clay I have laying around. And I'll show you what happens if I were to drop this, right? It just shatters. It's bone dry, the most fragile stage. Leather hard clay, on the other hand, it, you can see this is one of my um, slab cups that I didn't like, um, but it's generally, I can't, like I can squish it a little bit. If I were to bend it, it breaks apart, but not quite like the bone dry clay does. Um, so you can do scraffito at both stages. It's just going to come out differently. Let me zoom in for you. Doesn't seem to be focusing too well. Um, so I have my underglaze right here and I have a paintbrush. I'm going to just apply my glaze directly onto the bone dry clay. If you have a newspaper or a magazine at home, I would love you to do your glazing on top of that as opposed to directly on your canvas. You don't want to get any type of glaze on your canvas. So I'm applying the underglaze to my bone dry clay. I'm going to apply it to my leather hard clay as well. Then putting a generous coat on, I suggest doing two coats. That way you have a nice rich black color after it gets fired. So you would be applying this onto your bird after your construction is done, right? Your construction is completely done, but you haven't done any designs. And you can see right now, my bone dry clay has totally absorbed that underglaze, right? And it looks like it's dry. You can see a couple little spots that are still a little wet and shiny, but for the most part, the bone dry clay, um, clay is super absorbent and it just like sucks the glaze in. Leather hard, on the other hand, you can see this is still wet. There are parts of it that it that are dry, right? Like right up here, you can see that it's trying to get the light on it. You can see that it's kind of dry, it looks matte finish, but this is still shiny. So I'm gonna apply another layer onto my bone dry clay. I'm going to let that dry. This one is not quite ready for its second layer yet. You can see it's definitely drying more, but it takes time because of the moisture content in the clay. Okay, I've let this dry. You can see there's a teeny tiny bit of uh, wet underglaze over there, but that's okay. I'm going to put my second coat on. Just like painting, you want it to be smooth, right? You don't want lumps here or, you know, you want to be able to smooth it out with your brush, make it a nice even coat. So that's my second coat on there. My second coat on the bone dry clay is already dry. I'm going to pause the recording and let it dry. Okay, while I continue to let the leather hard clay dry or the underglaze dry on it, I'm going to put away my underglaze. I'm going to wash this in a little bit. Um, but this one is ready for the scraffito technique. <clears throat> and I have my 
one of my loop tools and I also have my needle tool but if I have and and you should be looking at your design that your sketchbook should be open next to you as you do this but I can feel this it's not um, it's not wet it's totally dry and so when it's Done on bone dry clay, the, the carving process is a little bit different. It's more, you're more scraping and scratching it off. But you can see whenever I do it, I use my ring finger to brace my hand. I feel like I have more control if I have this as an anchor. You can see doing it on bone dry clay creates a lot of dust. I'm just going to put it off to the side. If you had a large section, right, if you had a design where, let's say I had dots, but I wanted my dots to be black, I'm going to go ahead and draw all of my dots with my needle tool. But if I wanted those dots to be black and everything else white, I need to carve around those dots. So I've made them. So now I'm just gonna take some time and carve in between. It's a process but it results in a beautiful product. Okay, so that I would continue to do that to get the background to be white and the dots to be black. So at this point, my leather hard clay, the underglaze has pretty much dried on it. You can still see a tiny bit in this little depression that's still wet, but the difference in this graffito technique on bone dry clay versus leather hard clay is I'm not gonna be scratching this. This carves quite easily. And instead of a lot of little dust, you get these like long pieces. It's a lot smoother of a process. Um, if I were to draw on it, the needle tool is not, oops, that little piece came off. The needle tool is not the best to carve with because it has such a point on it. Um, it generally just drags the clay. You can see like it makes those little crumbs. But if you're drawing something and then you're gonna carve around it, it's good for that. Right, if I wanted to have a black dot, I'm gonna carve here. If you have, if you're doing it, if you're carving and you're left with what we call chatter in the printmaking world, I used to call them leftover lines, but if I'm carving all this out and I end up with some lines still there, like these, I kind of like it, but it's up to you what you do. If you wanted it to be perfectly white and clean, then you clean it all up. If you wanted to leave it so that it kind of resembles texture, that's fine too. But if that's the if that's the case, I would make sure that when you're carving, you're doing it in the same direction because it, whatever you direction you're working in, those lines are going to be left in that direction if you're intending to leave lines. If I didn't want that anymore, I could just take it and carve right over it. So you can see this process, it goes a little faster on leather hard clay. Um, I think you have to be be careful in, in both aspects. This one is not as fast. Your, your tools will get clogged with the leather hard clay and you'll have to clean them out. If I'm back on my bone dry clay and I want to go a little faster, it takes a little more time because it's already dry. 
that is is this graffito process you want to wait to do your designs until you have your underglaze on bone dry leather hard